So what are your adrenal medulla? Well, what you have to ask to answer what is your are your adrenal glands? And they are special glands that sit on top of your kidneys. So this is the adrenal glands, and we actually covered this a lot more in Phil 142, so a preview of good things to come. So here we have our kidneys, and you have these adrenal glands sitting on top of your kidneys. And this is what so if you have a cortex and you have a medulla, the cortex tends to be on the outside. The cortex is on the outside, the medulla is on the inside. Same thing with the adrenal glands. So the medulla is on the inside, just like your medulla oblongata is a more inner part of your brain. The cerebral cortex is the outer surface. Same with the adrenal cortex and medulla. So the cortex is the outer, the medulla is in the inner. Now, what we have here is the sympathetic nervous system actually innervates this adrenal medulla. So what we have here is a special case so most preganglionic fibers in the sympathetic nervous system are relatively short. And in terms of the chain ganglia, yeah, short preganglionic, then you have the ganglion, then you have your postganglionic fiber. And then that goes on to your target organ. Now, the thing is that with the adrenal medulla, it gets a little different. And this is a very special case if you put a little asterisk or a little highlight because it doesn't quite follow the rules of those pre- and post-ganglionic fibers we covered earlier. So with the adrenal medulla, what's interesting is that the pre-ganglionic fiber actually runs all the way to the adrenal medulla. So this is a very interesting thing. So it's not a post, the pre-ganglionic, instead of being short, it's very long in terms of going to, directly going to the center of the adrenal gland. Now, the thing is that where does the ganglion go? Well, the interesting thing is that the, well, there is no ganglion between the spinal cord and the adrenal medulla. Again, the ganglion would be after the preganglionic nerve. So what about the postganglionic cell? Well, now we have, instead of having a short preganglionic, now it's super long. That's going to take away the length from the postganglionic cell, right? Because it used to be like a typical sympathetic Short preganglionic, long pre postganglionic. But if the preganglionic gets really big, the postganglionic gets very small. In fact, it's so small, it's a specialized cell. So if these postganglionic cells are actually specialized medullary cells, I think we, we cover it a little in this semester, but we cover a lot more next semester. So yeah, that's where all the postganglionic nerve fibers are. They're actually the cells of the adrenal medulla. So the interesting thing is that Instead of the synapsing on a different type of tissue in the adrenal medulla, the interesting thing is now when you have sympathetic nervous system activity activating all those other organs, now it's sending all these action potentials and signals and activating along this nerve fiber. And what it's going to do is to cause these postganglionic cells to actually secrete their neurotransmitters, but instead of onto another cell, it's actually going to secrete it into your circulatory system, into your blood. So that's the real cool thing about the adrenal medulla. But again, it's the exception because it doesn't quite follow the typical rules of a sympathetic nervous fiber. The preganglionic fiber is relatively long, and then the postganglionic cells, were, or, which, or what ordinarily would be a postganglionic cell, is actually cells of the adrenal medulla. All right, so we do have time for the parasympathetic. Okay, great. So why is it parasympathetic? So it's like, okay, sympathetic, parasympathetic. We know sympathetic means suffering together, but para means to the side. So side of suffering together, what does that mean? Well, now instead of talking about functional, now it's talking more about anatomy. So here we have the sympathetic nervous system, but if you kind of like try to lay them out to and kind of butterfly them to the side, the parasympathetic, again, para is a prefix typically meaning beside or next to. So if you had the parasympathetic nervous system I showed here in the purple, notice that it's kind of off to the side of the sympathetic nervous system. So again, the sympathetic nervous system, you have all the chain, chain ganglia and all the fibers that are very close to the vertebrae. But the parasympathetic nervous system is off to the side. Well, it's also be, because, again, it's making room for the sympathetic nervous system, or you could say the sympathetic ner nervous system is kind of taking up the space that's close to the vertebrae, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system, it has to go off to the side because it's already being occupied by the sympathetic nervous system. 
Okay, so then we have sympathetic, again, the ganglia, short preganglionic, long postganglionic, but parasympathetic, now you have those long preganglionic fibers and a relatively short postganglionic fiber. Now, what are the responses? And these are pretty much the inverse of, at the first two, they're like the sympathetic response, but flipped upside down. So again, this is why the parasympathetic response is kind of like the brakes on your metabolism, your heart rate, your blood pressure, and breathing. And the thing is that now it's time to regest. And the thing is like when you're doing, uh, or back to the sympathetic system and exercise. So when you're exercising, do you just like, sit there are you fine can you just go to sleep right after or what do you do it, what do you feel typically feel after your you exercise are you more hungry are you hungrier or less hungry like say you wait an hour let's ask the chat after your exercise are you typically hungrier a few hours later or are you less hungry protein yeah you want that protein right you want to eat stuff Hungrier, hangry, starving, right? So this is what the, why the parasympathetic nervous system is important. Because during all that exercise, you increase your metabolism, you increase your energy expenditure, you're using pumping all that blood, your heart is also consuming a lot of calories as well, consuming all this oxygen. Now you need to replenish all that energy. So this is why it's important to have the parasympathetic response. You're no longer exercising. You're no longer in an intense situation. So this is why you start to increase the digestion. So increase salivation and digestive gland secretion. You want to break down your food to replace all those lost nutrients and energy you just spent. And then this is why all the digestive organs and salivary glands, they increase during the parasymp or parasympathetic activity increases the activity of salivary glands and the digestive system. And if you get too much food and you already absorbed all the nutrients, what are, what's going to happen? Well, now it's time for urination defecation. And tear production, that's kind of a specialized version as well. And sexual arousal, again, it's no longer thinking about the exercise and that, or if you're, it's a fight or flight situation, no longer of dealing with the threat, right? So the thing is that now you're not going to think about that. Now it's time to do everything to replenish the system, but also specialize things that aren't high priority when you're in an intense situation.